Good morning. Happy first day of May. Yes, it is Friday, May 1st. I, if I think back upon the whole school year, I can't believe we got here so quickly. All of you have a month and a week or so before you are fourth graders. And I just want to give you every little bit of literary help along the way to push you to greater heights in fourth grade. So today we are continuing with our author perspective series. Today's book is called Almost Gone, The World's Rarest Animals. It's by Steve Jenkins. Now this book is gonna take us through some animals that are really struggling, whose numbers are dwindling, and who might not be able to survive without a little help or maybe restoration to their original habitats. So without further ado, happy Friday, here we go. A crested shell duck from China. There are fewer than 100 left. The crested shell duck was once, formed, once found throughout much of East Asia. It has been hunted for food and for its beautiful feathers until it has become one of the most endangered birds in the world. The Grand Cayman Blue Iguana. It's from the Grand Cayman Island in the Caribbean. There were fewer than 25 left. This iguana is found on just one island in the Caribbean. The blue iguana is three to four feet in length, weighs 15 to 20 pounds, and can live to be 50 years old. Its body turns bright turquoise during mating season. Blue iguanas eat fruit, flowers, and leaves. They have been hunted by people for food, run over by cars, and have had their nests destroyed by wild dogs. Now, on to the northern hairy-nosed wombat in Australia. There are fewer than 60 left. The northern hairy-nosed wombat got its name from the short bristly hairs that grow on its face. It is a stocky, powerful animal, about three feet long. It uses its strong front claws for digging burrows and finding the roots it eats. Sheep and cattle ranching have destroyed most of this wombat's territory. It is now found only in a tiny corner of, the national, of a national park in Australia. The Yangtze River Dolphin, or Baiji, from China, fewer than 20 left. These freshwater dolphins live in small groups along the length of the Yangtze River. They may grow to be eight feet long and weigh up to 500 pounds. The Baiji appear in many Chinese myths and folk tales. Pollution, collisions with ships' propellers, and construction on the river have greatly endangered these creatures. There were approximately 6,000 baiji in the 1950s, a few hundred in the 1980s, and fewer than two dozen in 2000. The Assam rabbit, or hispid hare, India and Nepal, fewer than 110 left. This gentle, slow-moving rabbit is also known as a hispid hare. It is about one and a half feet long and weighs four or five pounds. Assam rabbits live in tall grass in the foothills of the Himalaya mountains. They eat the roots and young shoots of this grass. The destruction of this habitat to create farmland has made the Assam rabbit extremely rare. The Miami blue butterfly, Florida. United States. 
fewer than 50 of these butterflies left? My goodness. For 50 years, no one saw a Miami blue butterfly. Then in 2000, a colony of these tiny bright blue butterflies was found on an island in the Florida Keys. In many places, development has destroyed this butterfly's habitat and the plants its caterpillars eat. Butterfly collectors and pesticides used to control mosquitoes also threaten the Miami blue butterfly. Oh. The Javan rhinoceros, Javan rhinoceros from Vietnam and Indonesia. There are fewer than 60 left. Although the Javan rhinoceros once lived throughout Southeast Asia, it is now found in just two national parks in Vietnam and in Indonesia. These rhinos live in dense, low-lying tropical forests and much of their jungle habitat has been cleared by farming or logging. Their numbers have also been seriously reduced by poaching or illegal hunting. The hunters are after the rhino's horns, which is in great demand in traditional Asian medicine. Unlike many, unlike many critically endangered animals, there are no Javan rhinoceroses in captivity. Interesting. As we talked about earlier in the year, zoos being able to use their spaces to protect endangered animals, although the job in rhinoceros is not in any zoos or any captivity. It is just existing in these national parks. The golden lion tamarind. This squirrel-sized monkey lives in the tropical forests on the coast of Brazil. It is omnivorous. It will eat almost anything, including fruit, insects, frogs, lizards, and small birds. Golden lion tamarinds are preyed upon by eagles, snakes, and jaguars, but are endangered mostly because people have destroyed so much of their forest home. A program to breed golden lion tamarinds in captivity has increased their numbers in recent years. The Eastern Baird Bandicoot, Australia. Fewer than 300 left. The Bandicoot is a marsupial, a mammal that carries its young in a pouch. The Eastern Baird Bandicoot is about the size of a rabbit. It is found in one small part of Australia. A shy, solitary creature, the bandicoot sleeps in burrows during the day and comes out at night to search for grubs, worms, beetles, and berries. It uses its excellent sense of smell to find food and its pointed nose and strong claws to dig. The bandicoot is a fast runner and can jump three feet in one leap. Oh, I think I remember seeing this insect in a bug's life. Giant stick insect, Lord Howe Island, Australia. Fewer than 10 left? My goodness. A rock rising from the sea nor near Lord Howell or Lord Howe Islands is the home of the world's rarest insect. The six inch long giant stick insect, it was thought to be extinct since 1918 when a ship ran aground on Lord Howe Island and rats from the ship attacked the giant stick insects living there. A few survived, however, and in 2001, three of the insects were discovered on this rocky outcropping. My goodness. These guys just have one little rocky island left themselves. Dwarf water buffalo, or tamara, from the Philippines, fewer than 200 left. At 650 pounds, the dwarf water buffalo, also called the tamara, is small for a buffalo. It lives in dense wet forests on one island of the Philippines, where it feeds on grass and water plants. Much of the forest land where this buffalo lives has been cleared, 
is clear, destroying its food source. Hunting has also helped reduce its numbers. The Bactrian camel from Mongolia and China, fewer than 500 left. Bactrian camels are the two humped relatives of the more common one humped camel. They live in the harsh deserts of Central Asia. Their humps contain stored fat and allow these camels to go for several days without food or water. Their long shaggy coats keep them warm in the cold desert nights and they are able to close their nostrils to keep out blowing sand. In many places, domesticated camels have crowded out their wild Bactrian cousins. Waterfall frog or torrent frog, Australia, an unknown number left. The waterfall frog, also called the torrent frog, lives near fast moving streams and waterfalls in the rainforests of northeastern Australia. Once common, it has almost disappeared in just a few years. No one is sure why this frog and many others around the world have become endangered so quickly. They may be the victims of a new kind of fungus or may be especially sensitive to the effects of global warming. Oh. Hmm. I'm going to have to take a moment and try and figure out how I'm going to pronounce this. You have your guesses. I'm going to say the Coalacanth. Coalacanth. Yeah, the Indian Ocean. Unknown number left. Sometimes called living fossils, these ancient fish were thought to have disappeared 80 million years ago. In fact, fossilized Coalacanths six, 360 million years ago have been found. In 1938, a fisherman in the Indian Ocean caught a coelacanth in his net. Since then, a few more coelacanths have been caught. The largest was nearly six feet long and weighed 200 pounds. Scientists think that these fish live in caves on the ocean floor. Whoa. The Iriomote cat, Japan. Fewer than 100 left. This wild cat lives on only one small Japanese island. It's about two feet long with legs and a tail that are short compared to its body. The Iriomote cat hunts at night and feeds on small mammals, reptiles, birds, and fish. It has lost much of its habitat to human activity and faces competition from feral cats, pets that have gone wild. The Abington Island tortoise, the Gal Galapagos Islands. One left. This tortoise nicknamed Lonesome George is the rarest animal in the world. He is probably the last living member of his species. Abington Galapagos tortoises are big enough to ride on. Big enough to ride on, wow. The males can be four feet long and weigh 500 pounds. The tortoises were overhunted in the 1800s by sailors who caught them by the thousands and took them on board their ships for food. One left. Wow, my goodness. Hmm. 
interesting whale here. The Northern right whale, Atlantic Ocean, fewer than 350 left. Before they were hunted nearly to extinction in the 1800s, there were as many as 50,000 of these huge mammals living in the North Atlantic. This whale was given its name by whalers who finding it easy to capture and full of valuable oil and blubber called it the right whale to catch. The Northern right whale has been protected from whalers since 1935, but its habit of floating on the surface of the ocean makes it the frequent victim of ship's propellers. Mm. Now, here's a couple animals that are gone forever. These animals are extinct. There is little or no chance that they will be seen again. Because the web of connections among living things is so complex, we don't understand all of the consequences of a species becoming extinct. We do know that something unique has been lost and can never be replaced. The MOA, New Zealand, extinct around 1600. The largest of these flightless birds stood over six feet tall at the shoulder and weighed 600 pounds. When a big moa held its head high, it measured 12 or 13 feet tall. For millions of years, these forest dwellers had never seen a human. So they had no natural fear of the first people who arrived on their island home. Within a hundred years of the first encounter with humans, they had been hunted to extinction. Stellar's sea cow, the Bering Strait between Alaska and Russia, extinct in 1768, or just before this nation became a country. The sea cow was huge, 25 feet long and 8,000 pounds. It swam in the cold waters of the Northern Pacific. Trappers collecting seal furs hunted the stellar sea cow for food. The last of the stellar sea cows died just 27 years after the first being described by the naturalist George Steller. Tasmanian wolf, or thylacine, Tasmania, Australia, last seen in 1936. The Tasmanian wolf, or thylacine, was not really a wolf. It was a marsupial and carried its young in a pouch like a kangaroo. It was named after the island where it was last seen in the wild. It was hunted to extinction by ranchers trying to protect their sheep. For years after the last known Tasmanian wolf died, there were reports of a few animals still living in the wild, but no one has ever found one. The Guam flying fox. Guam, the Mariana Islands, last seen in 1974. Little is known about these animals. The Guam flying fox was a kind of bat named for its pointed face and large ears. It fed at night on flowers and fruit. It is suspected that this bat and many other animals on Guam were killed off by an invasive species, the brown tree snake, which was introduced to their island home in the 1940s. There is little hope that any Guam flying foxes survived today. Now, for a little bit of good news, those animals coming back. Not all endangered animals necessarily become extinct. Some animals that were almost gone have been able to recover, or at least begin increasing in number. People have acted to protect their habitats, reduce the threat of hunting, 
or collecting and breed animals in captivity to be released back into the wild. It's hard work, but for these animals, all and all living things on earth, it has paid off. So some animals coming back. The gharial or Indian crocodile. Oh my goodness. I saw this crocodile. The gharial. Do you remember that crocodile? This one here? Yeah. I saw this crocodile when my wife and I visited India a few years ago. The gharial. Boy, it is an interesting looking crocodile. It's a very thin snout, very long, thin snout. The gharial, also known as the Indian crocodile, can measure up to 20 feet long, making it one of the largest crocodiles. The gharial's long, thin snout is filled with sharp teeth used for catching fish. Some people believe that the nose of this crocodile has medicinal properties. It has been protected from hunters since the 1970s, when there were only about 100 left. Today, there are several thousand gharials living in the wild. The whooping crane, North America. The whooping crane is the largest North American bird. It stands nearly five feet tall, my goodness, with wings that can measure eight feet from tip to tip. Whooping cranes are migratory birds. They travel each fall from their nesting grounds in central Canada to their wintering grounds in the Gulf Coast of the United States and then back to Canada each spring. This is a long, dangerous journey. By the 1940s, there were only 22 whooping cranes left in the world. Breeding and protection programs have increased that number to more than 300 today. The Alpine Ibex. Once common throughout the mountains of Central Europe, there were probably fewer than 50 of these mountain goats left in 1900. Alpine Ibex were killed for their horns or in the belief that the parts of their bodies could cure certain diseases. In the 1950s, several zoos began breeding the alpine ibex and returning them to the wild. Today, alpine ibex in France, Switzerland, and Italy, and for uh, today, there are more than 10,000 alpine ibex in France, Switzerland, Italy, and other European countries. All right, so this wasn't a narrative story. We weren't being told a story that had twists and turns and a climax and down. We did, however, get many examples. And these many examples, <clears throat> even though it wasn't a story told, can have an effect on how we feel. How did this book make you feel? Did you want to do anything? Does this book make you want to protect or help protect these animals? The author's perspective is key in all of these books. They really want us to use this information they're giving us and to act differently, to think differently, and help protect our planet. All right. Thank you so much, guys. Happy Friday, and I'll see you in just a moment in office hours.